funded health policies, plus debating the merits or disadvantages of Medicare. Tonight, a sad story which shows what a financial mess some of our hospitals are in, since hospital funding and responsibility was pushed back on the states. Hospital wards closing, operating theatres working restricted hours. Stories of people suffering, even dying. Stephen Claney has one such case. Pat Scully was 70 years of age when she began painting. For nine years she painted the serene landscapes and rustic old buildings which now adorn her family home in the Melbourne suburb of Essendon. On the easel, built lovingly for her by her 81-year-old husband John, is the painting on which she was working the day tragedy struck. Pat fell and broke her thigh bone at a local supermarket. Although she had private hospital cover, the ambulance rushed her to the nearest public hospital, which happened to be the Royal Melbourne. She died a week later after an operation. An operation delayed for two days because of the current funding crisis in our hospitals. A delay her distressed husband says caused her unnecessary pain and suffering. They gave her morphine I suppose, but morphine lasted half an hour and she could only have it every two or three hours. And she was suffering and... Mr Scully doesn't attach blame to the Royal Melbourne Hospital. His anger and frustration are directed at a system which has its priorities wrong. They can spend millions on trying to get the Olympic Games. They can send young people for six months or 12 months up to Canberra to the Institute of Sport to teach them how to put the shot or, or throw a javelin. And they can't do something for people who are in those circumstances. And the system, there's something wrong in the system and unless people are prepared to say something about it, it will continue like that. The real tragedy, of course, is that this sort of suffering is happening again tonight for many people and at many different hospitals. And while the patients, their families and friends ask how this can be allowed in an affluent society, the hospitals themselves won't comment. They're not going to rock the boat. They're more concerned with protecting the funding which they already get. But the Australian Medical Association is commenting. Executive Director Ron Hastings. There simply aren't enough accident and emergency facilities. I gather that uh, the State Minister might have acknowledged that today by announcing that some additional money might become available later, presumably after the federal election. And how would you feel if you were Pat Scully's husband? I would feel like doing damage to someone. I would feel personally abused. The system's let her down, hasn't it? The system failed her ultimately. She's dead. The examples of our crisis are happening daily. Patients suffering in wards, victims sent home to die because of bed shortages, emergency patients lining corridors on trolleys, the wait for elective surgery, nothing better than a macabre joke. John Scully didn't seek publicity. He didn't want to bear his emotions. He decided, however, the price was worth paying if it would help force change and perhaps ease someone else's suffering. It's scandalous and, you know, I'm a, a private person and I've got nothing to gain from uh, making this public. It embarrasses me and brings it all back to me. And I don't want that, but but somebody's got to speak up. Somebody's got to do something about it because otherwise there are people in there today that's the same thing's going to happen to them. Yeah.